Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ETS 2A. It's on the interdependence of science, engineering, and technology. And so it's really that junction between science and engineering that is important. And so if we think about what science is, remember, it's the study of phenomena in the universe. And so we're using this inquiry process to come up with new knowledge to explain the way the world works. Engineering is slightly different. We're looking at human needs and how we can use design to come up with solutions which eventually become something called technology and it makes our lives better. And so knowledge and technology is kind of the bridge between science and engineering. In other words, knowledge that's created in science helps us to create new technology which helps us do new science. And let me give you a couple ex examples of that. Quantum mechanics is really understanding how um, nature works at the real small level and one of the greatest breakthroughs came at this meeting in Brussels um, in the early part of the 1900s and at this meeting there's some famous people here uh, we've got Max Planck, Mary Curie, here's Albert Einstein, in the second row we can see Niels Bohr there's tons of other scientists who I should probably know and were incredibly important in uh, establishing the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. What did that lead to? Well that la led to things like lasers, transistors, microchips, MRI, functional MRI, and so it's created all of this technology and we couldn't have got that technology without a fundamental understanding of how electrons work. What's another example of engineering going in the other direction? Well microscopes is engineering. So it was created by inventors and what it allowed us to see was a world that we'd never seen before. We could see cells which created new sciences which led to new technology and so it cycles like this. And so a better way to think about it is not being discrete different fundamental studies. We've got the study of science and engineering, but we really have a gradient. We have a blend here between the two. Example of something I've done in my life that shows this blend. I spent two summers working at Montana State University's Center for Biofilm Engineering. What I was studying was um, antibiotic resistant bacteria and they form these things called biofilms um, which is less important than the center itself. The center contains scientists, it contains engineers, it contains statisticians um, and they're all working together to understand biofilms and make the world better to apply it some way uh, in industry to make our lives better and so it's really you're not going to be a scientist or an engineer you're gonna have to kinda work either in these centers or with groups or kinda wear two hats and so how do we teach this in schools? What's the teaching progression? Well, we want to start in the lower elementary grades by talking about tools, tools that make our lives better. And in science, one tool that makes our life better is the telescope. So that was used by Galileo and he was able to see things in the night sky that no one had seen before. It helped him to see and establish this uh, heliocentric view. In other words, before then, a lot of scientists believed that the Earth was at the center of the universe, and then it, people like Galileo put forward this heliocentric model. In other words, he wouldn't have been able to come up with that without tools like, um, like telescopes. As we move into the upper elementary grades, we want to talk, start talking about tools and instruments. And so an instrument could be, excuse me, a tool could be like a ruler or a balance or a graduated cylinder. They allow us to make more precise measurements and do better science. Um, telescopes, microscopes allow us to see things that are really far away or that are really, really close but incredibly small. And lots of times these new technologies allow us to make new scientific discoveries. And so eventually we created electron microscopes which eventually created better technology. As we move into middle school, we want to talk about this blend between science and engineering, this idea that advances in and science lead to new technology and engineering which can create new science. A couple of examples, battery technology is going to be incredibly important in our future as our products, technological products that we carry around get smaller and smaller and smaller and so research in the area of batteries will create better batteries which will allow us to create more research. Solar cells, medical instruments are also kind of right along these lines. The more discoveries we can make, the better technology we can have and the better discoveries we can make. As we move into high school we want to give names to these two things. It's really research and design. Research is going to be the science side, design is going to be the engineering. And so when we get complex problems, and let me throw one at you, um, nuclear energy will probably be a part of our energy uh, solutions into the future, but one of the problems is we create nuclear waste. So what do we do with that? Well, now we've got a problem that's going to span both research and design. 
to understand what to do with that waste, we need a physicist, but we also need a nuclear engineer. We need a geologist, and we also need a transportation engineer. We need an econ uh, economist, construction engineer, sociologist, safety engineer, psychologist, environmental engineer. In other words, it spans both of these sides to come up with a solution. And, and as our problems become more and more complex, our solutions are going to have to become more complex as well. And research and design is a big part of that, and I hope that was helpful.